Oh, it's another day in the books. Chalk it up. One day away from deload. Now I want to do a training chat today. I want to talk about the second set effect. This chat topic came to me during that set of lunges, the first set of lunges and the second set of lunges. When I mentioned that my balance was off in the first one, you saw it yourself. My balance was off. The rep started slow. Even the first rep, I came down and I just stuck there for a little bit. I hate doing that during lunges, but I did that because my coordination was off. My body, my legs, they weren't, they weren't ready. They hadn't been given the signal to know what to expect. So I want to talk about um, basically the cycle that goes on with each exercise, like each round of sets for an exercise. I think that it's good to be pretty systematic with this type of talk because I want to, I want to think about the body, the brain, the muscles as a machine and a computer. And I think that's a good way to explain what happens, at least in my opinion, what happens with the second set effect and just one exercise, taking the warm-ups, the first set, second set, third set, maybe more. I just want to talk about the cycle that happens with each exercise. So you got to think about your brain, your central nervous system as a computer here. And when you're warming up, you're giving your brain, you're giving that computer input. So you're telling your brain, the computer, I'm doing this exercise. I'm going to start to add weight to it. This is the form that I'm moving my body through this movement pattern, and you do that. You start light because you haven't given your computer any input yet. So why would you just start with the max load that you're gonna hit for that day? It doesn't make any sense. You haven't given your computer time to tell your machine, which is your muscles, what to be ready for, what to recruit, how they're gonna work, how they're gonna move. You haven't even done that yet. So the purpose of the warm-ups is to provide input to your brain, AKA your computer. So you ramp up in weight without exhausting your system, your machine, which is the muscles. So then you get to that first working set. Now, arguably, this is where you really input the most accurate data into your computer, your brain, your nervous system, because this actually represents the weight that you're using for your working sets. So this is why I believe that you know, the first set is generally, it's good because you've done some prior warmups, exercise specific warmups up to that, pyramiding up in weight, decreasing in reps as you pyramid up in weight, and that prevents pre-exhaustion from that, uh, before that first working set. But the first working set really provides the most accurate data to your computer, and your computer can set up your machine exactly how it's supposed to work. And I believe, I believe that's what provides you with the second set effect. So you're, you're generally always going to get that second set effect because you've, you're, you always have to do a first set to get to the second. You can't have one without the other, right? I mean, I guess you can have a first without a second, but you can't have a second without a first. So the second set effect, if you think about it, your brain was given the most accurate information and it sent the signals to your muscles that told them you need to recruit these types of fibers, this many of them, and you're going to move through this movement pattern. And you saw that, you know, my first set was rough, kind of janky, balance was off a little bit. And arguably that was because I didn't do that great of a warm up. All I did was a few body weight reps that you didn't see on camera. And then I went straight to my working weight and I kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit. But after that first set, everything came back into place. That's a testimony to proper warm-ups right there, by the way. So the second set effect, I was provided with everything that I needed from the first, and you saw the rep speed increase because my machine was ready. It was given the signal because I gave my computer the input. And of course, you can give your computer all the input you want, but your machine does not have infinite energy. So your muscles don't have infinite energy, and that's where fatigue comes in. So that's where the cycle of each exercise ends. Warm-up, provide input, first working set, that feels good because you warmed up, it provides the most accurate input, your machine's running great for the second set, your machine's running great for the third set, but generally if you're using weight that's tough and truly challenging, you're gonna start to run into failure, you're gonna push up to failure because your machine is gonna run out of energy, run out of gas. Doesn't matter how much or how good of input it's been given, it's gonna run out of gas. 
And that's where that cycle of that exercise ends. And I think it's important to think about that. You know, if you really break things down, sometimes you've got to be like, you know, I'm not putting a lot of emotion into this explanation. It's a computer. It's a machine. It's data. You can think of it any way you want. This is the way that I think of it. And I just wanted to share that with you. When you, when you hit your next exercise, think about it as a cycle. Warm up. Provide input. First set feels better because you warmed up. That provides the most accurate input. Second set feels better best. Third set, you start to get fatigued. You push up towards failure, whether you hit it or not. And then you just move on to the next exercise and you can restart that cycle over. All right, that's my training chat topic. Not bad. Wasn't the greatest, I thought, but <laughs> it was okay. Um, whether I explain that good or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I feel like you're probably going to get my point and maybe you'll try that thought process in the gym next time, that'd be great. I mean, that's what I would really want you to do. So my workout is done. Yeah, I hit uh, quite a bit of stuff today. You know, the compounds, the isolations, I got it all done. Everything went up in weight. So this was my last GST lift day before a deload week. And now I just have one more uh, press day before a deload week. So I'll be knocking that out. Now I take a one day rest. I'm going to rest tomorrow. It's a busy work day, so I don't try to stress myself out on that day and cram a workout in. I want to give myself adequate time to feel good about my workout and not stress because of it. So I'm going to wait. That's going to be on Tuesday. And then after that, it's deload time. I'm really looking forward to that. But for now, you know, I'm going to go get something to eat. Uh, my wife grilled some really good chicken last night. I'm going to have some of that. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to have on the side yet. I'll throw up a picture. I'll make sure to post a picture at the end of this video for you. Okay. I'll talk to you later. That's all I got to say. Bye-bye. Here's that grilled chicken I was just telling you about. It's marinated with Italian dressing. Man, um, Italian dressing marinated chicken on the grill. It's tough to beat. On the side, I got a little buffalo wild wings spicy garlic sauce. You know I like my protein. But there's a little secret here. Aha, ramen. Thai chili, spicy chili, I believe it's called. This one is really good. You can't go wrong with that. I had to do it up. I needed the sodium. I needed the carbs. I wanted the fats. So this is that post-workout meal that I was talking about.